I spent most of my life, I think, wondering about what it means to be uh, British. And particularly the last 10 years, since my friend Ardle told me I was the most British person he'd ever met. I decided that really I just ought to try and find out a bit more about my country. We know there are all these sort of traits that the British have, like apologising all the time, for which I apologise that I've, I've said that. That we're fascinated by the weather, that we're fascinated by etiquette, that we're the mother of democracies. But I don't know where any of that comes from. So essentially, my inspiration was just to try and fit some facts around these characteristics. To the outsider, Britain and what it means to be British have always been fairly obvious. Britain was a place of pomp, circumstance, democracy, a rather woolly established church and overpaid footballers, a nation that loved petty rules and regulations, that exercised a pointless and incomprehensible system of etiquette and seemingly preferred to stand on the second step of the podium to winning and getting covered in all that champagne. My favourite fact in the book is how many islands there are in Great Britain. Now, I've tried asking lots of my mates how many islands do you think there are in Great Britain? Some of them have said four, maybe six, eight. Some people have gone as high as 100, but it isn't. It's 6,289 islands. I'm not quite sure whether they are all fully-fledged islands or whether some of them disappear uh, at high tide. But it's far, it's far more than you'd expect. And uh, hopefully there's a lot more in the book that you wouldn't expect either. A single month of Olympic and Paralympic Games seems to change everything to challenge every long-held belief about the British character, not least that the Australians are better than us at sport. For years we'd been laughed at by them for only winning the so-called sitting-down sports like rowing, cycling and sailing. But now we were beating them at everything, standing, running, squatting, punching and falling backwards from a 10-metre concrete platform. I've got lots of favourite bits of Britain because I didn't actually go on holiday anywhere else until I was a about 16, I suppose. So we, my parents used to take us round the national parks and cathedrals of Britain every summer. I actually know Britain really well, which I'm very, very pleased about. And I love the Dales and I love the Peak District. But the bit I love most now is the bit I live in, strangely, which is the South Downs National Park. And my very favourite part of that is a hill near where I live, where, truth be told, I would be at my happiest if I'd run to the top of it. I was covered in mud. It was raining, I had no shirt on, and I was going, Ah! Oh. Should we now be proud of everything? Is there more to be proud of? What are our great traditions? Are we really good at inventing stuff? Are we obsessed by the weather? Did we invent democracy? Are we obsessed with gardens? And who was Kenneth Branagh meant to be in that opening ceremony? I'm not actually sure I have a least favourite uh, British habit because I quite approve of all of them. <laughs> But no, there are lots of fantastic British traits, of which politeness is one. Love of gardening, slightly... Uh, I'm rambling now, I'm making no sense. You have to read the book. Bye. <laughs>